Good evening. Thanks for joining us. There is breaking news tonight. There's new reporting in the Washington Post on White House discussions at a senior level of another tax cut to head off a possible economic slowdown. Now, the Washington Post is citing three people familiar with the talks who say the White House is looking at a possible cut in payroll taxes and that talks are in the early stages. In the meantime, the White House is knocking down this idea, saying, telling us that cutting payroll taxes is not under consideration at this time. They've said the same to the Wall Street Journal. Now, if the Post three sources have it right, what's significant is this move would be evidence that within the White House, there is real concern the economy could be weakening, which is not the message they've been saying publicly at all. In fact, they're running pretty much a media campaign of denial and deflection and scapegoating. It's just not the way we see it. And of course, it's nice to have the mainstream media finally covering the economy, but they only <laughs> cover it when they can use uh, Sesame's Grover word of the day, recession. Grover, by the way, is my favorite longtime resident of Sesame Street. I'm just going to go on the record on that. He's furry, he's blue, what's not to like. He's not an economist, though. On the other hand, this guy is. He's chief economist at Morgan Stanley. If tariffs go up further to 25% on the balance, 300 billion of imports from China and stay there for four to six months' time, and China does take countermeasures somewhat similar to what we have seen overnight, then we will see global economy entering into recession in three quarters time, i.e. nine months time. He was focused, as apparently the White House may also be, on a number of policies and economic indicators that could signal trouble ahead. The trade war with China, bond prices, slowing business inve investment. Now, thankfully, none of those indicators guarantees a recession and not every economist sees the same degree of danger, but few are dismissing it entirely. Except it seems members of the administration, at least publicly, who've been doing this media blitz the last few days and whose words ring especially false if the Washington Post reporting bears out. I think we're in pretty good shape and I want to just say, you know, we should not be afraid of optimism. I don't know what it is. Everybody wants to talk about pessimism, recession. Is that why There's the no president... recession on the horizon. Does it sound like everybody's yelling nowadays? Maybe that's just me. That was Larry Kudlow. Uh, for the record, he predicted higher economic growth for the last two years than the economy actually saw. So he's certainly, a, let's say, an optimist, just not a very good economic forecaster, which he was asked about on another Sunday show. Okay, you say that, but you know, you actually said that in 2007, right before the, wor the second worst downturn in American history. This is what you wrote. Uh, there's no recession coming. This is in December of 07. The pessimistas were wrong. It's not going to happen. The Bush boom is alive and well. It's finishing up its sixth consecutive year with more to come. The more to come was a massive downturn. So I, I, I admire your optimism, but the, the data is pointing in another direction. Well, I plead guilty to that late 2007 forecast. I plead guilty. Well, yeah, there's nothing else you can do. It's on the record. As for Vice President Pence today, he cited a whole new kind of economic indicator, two guys who like beer in the beach. These two fellows walked by on the beach. True story. A couple of big guys wearing Budweiser t-shirts. One of them looked over at me and he said, uh, hey, you're Vice President Mike Pence. I said, yes, I am. And he said, well, listen, he said, you got to tell the president that he's got to keep doing what he's doing because I made twice as much money last year as I made the year before. Which very possible. And if it is true, that's great for them. We all should do twice as well next year. But signs are we won't, or at least that the economy could slow considerably. Now, the administration is looking to put any possible blame for a slowdown elsewhere, which means cue the attacks on the media. I think what's changed is that the two and a half years of the collusion hunt and the Mueller report were a big dud. And so now they're searching around and they're trying to they're trying to burrow into the president's number one issue in the polls. A memo must have gone out with talking points because the media is also being blamed by spokesperson Hogan Gidley. Well, they have tried systematically to destroy this president even before he was sworn into office. And you saw it uh, with the marches on Washington, D.C., before he had passed a policy or pushed some type of proposal. It happened from sunup till sundown. The media has been complicit and compliant uh, with those efforts. But listen, first they push Russia, then they push racism, and now they're pushing a recession. The fact is this Wait, economy on, is doing better than it they, ever has I'm before. Not disagreeing. 
The president set the tone, though, for this particular talking point last week, tweeting the fake news media is doing everything they can to crash the economy because they think that will be bad for me in my reelection. Today, he also blamed Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, the person he appointed, quoting uh, from his tweet, our economy is very strong despite the horrendous lack of vision by Jay Powell and the Fed, but the Democrats are trying to will the economy to be bad for purposes of the 2020 election. Very selfish. Our Jim Acosta joins us now with more on the story in the White House's denial on this Washington Post story about uh, possible uh, consideration of tax cuts. Uh, Jim, earlier I said there must have been some memo that went out with talking points about the economy. I understand it turns out there actually was a memo that went out with talking points about the economy. Uh, that's right. There were talking points that went out some of the White House surrogates earlier today, Anderson. Uh, they were essentially, according to this one source close to the White House, uh, an extension of the president's rhetoric and his tweets. Uh, these talking points describe the U.S. economy as the best in the world. Uh, and the White House is predicting in these talking points that the economy is going to remain strong uh, through the 2020 election. But Anderson, when they're knocking down reports that a payroll tax cut is under consideration, uh, that's a pretty big deal. That is an indication that they are talking inside this White House about ways to boost this economy. And this White House official I spoke with earlier this evening while knocking down this notion they may uh, go after some sort of payroll tax cut said other tax cuts are under consideration. And so they're looking at a range of options, it seems right now, Anderson, to try to juice this economy. Meanwhile, the president is denying that uh, there's really anything wrong with the economy, economy right now. He's proclaiming it uh, to be just fine. But make no mistake, when Larry Kudlow, the top economic advisor, is scheduled to go on calls uh, throughout the rest of this week with business leaders and state and local officials to reassure uh, those officials that everything is just fine with the economy, there is growing concern inside this White House, and it mirrors what's happening across uh, much of the rest of the country, and it's particularly down on Wall Street. Mm. Anderson? Uh, Jim Acosta from the White House. Jim, thanks very much. Joining us now, somebody who, like Jerome Powell, the president hired, but soon tired of, Anthony Scaramucci, who famously served 11 days as White House Communications Director and is now uh, working to defeat his old boss and uh, next fall. Anthony, appreciate you joining us. Thanks very much. The administration, I'm wondering what you make of this Washington Post story. And again, Washington Post, three sources, White House saying not true, that they are looking at, in early stages, according to the Post, uh, a cut in the payroll tax. And I'm wondering, A, what you make of that and the fact that they're denying it. Would that be significant to you? Well, you know, look, on the margin, I mean, I think that was tried after the 9-11 attacks, and then there was also a tax rebate after the 9-11 attacks. And on the margin, it did improve uh, consumption. But the, the problem with those sorts of things is that, uh, you know, consumers plan for that, and, and a lot of consumers will take a big portion of that and save it because they know that there's an impending downturn coming. So uh, economics are mixed on that. Uh, some think it improves it. Other thinks it, think that it's neutral. I would suspect that people are fearful out there because if you talk to business leaders and the smaller business community, they're quite fearful. One of the big indicators for me, Anderson, remember I'm running $10 billion of capital, is the uh, trucking industry. You can tell in the trucking industry, in terms of where shipments are, um, whether or not the economy is going to be robust over the next two or three quarters. Mm. And so right now, uh, it's probably a 60% chance we'll have a recession by the second to third quarter wow. of 2020. How worried do you think the president should be uh, about re-election prospects if, I mean, if, if that 60% turns out to be right? I mean, if, if it's not doing as well come November, um, how much do, do, you know, his future is based on mm -hmm. the economic future? Well, let me just say this. I think it's important for people to know. I do not want there to be a recession. I want there to be aggressive wage growth course, for yeah. all Americans, and I definitely do not want there to be a recession. So some people are saying they want a recession to have the president lose re-election. That is not me. Uh, but yes, if there is a problem with the economy, uh, that will put very thin ice under his candidacy because, again, if you just look at the style points, the manifestations of his tweets today, which are uh, you know, constantly in delirium, I think it's scaring people. And one of the talking points that I hear from Republicans, well, it's the economy and uh, we could be going up against a socialist. And so I'll hold my nose and I'll do this. But if he's really fully weakened the economy, uh, I think those people will change their minds very quickly. So unfortunately, they've made one large bet. It's an economic bet. Um, and he's also, I mean, the way he's talking about the Federal Reserve chairman, that is literally the way a head of a banana republic would talk about their central bank. And so, uh, again, I'm astonished that the, uh, the politicians and the Republicans in my party 
that believe in the regulated free market, again, a regulated free market, are not speaking out about that because it's very important for the Constitution and trust in our capital markets that we leave some independence for the Fed and those yeah. governing agents at the Federal Reserve. So, well, look, I mean, so it, this is a very complicated situation because we're in new territory on every different front. I mean, the guy's attacking individual citizens. He attacked my wife gratuitously this morning for no reason. He's attacking the Federal Reserve chairman. He's got the entire GOP using their Twitter feed to attack fellow Republicans like me. I mean, this is, uh, this is down the checklist of authoritarian behavior, and it is very disconcerting to what I would call the normal group of people in the United States that are moderate Democrats and moderate Republicans. And I, so I, I would wanna, love to see it end, yeah. uh, and, and we're working on it.